needle to the bottom of the C. Twist, right hand, right foot, fan through the back. Down, you're going around, and the hip, like that. The left hip goes back. If you break your partner, you don't get another one. In today's lesson, we'll be working on the section called Needle to the Bottom of the Sea and Fan Through the Back. We finished the last section with diagonal flying. To turn in the left toe, the corner, right hand drops, left hip drops back, hands and foot, place the toe, drop the hands, drop the hips, needle to the bottom of the sea, straighten up. Right hand to the left wrist, twist your waist. Right hand, right foot, turn the left forearm, fan through the back. Left hip goes around the right hip. Drop the left hip back, turn in the right toe. Drop the right hip back, hands and foot, twist. Drop the hands, then hips drop, needle to the bottom of the sea. Arms round, right palm towards you, left palm away. Twist your waist. Left foot, left hand. Rotate the right hand, and right hip goes around the left. Fan through the back. Again, pigeon toed. Draw back. Raise the knee. Place the toe, drop the hands. Needle to the bottom of the C. Straighten up, arms round, twist to the waist. Right arm, right foot, left forearm, fan through the back. Drop the left hip, pigeon toed. Drop the right hip, hands and foot. Twist to the waist, hands and foot, drop. Drop the hips, needle to the bottom of the C. Straighten up, round, twist your waist to the right. Left hand, left foot, right arm rotates, fan through the back. Turn in the left toe, draw the hands back, raise the knee, twist, face the twist, toe. twist, Go. twist, 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 and that gives you a fair bit of rotation, and that way when you drop the hands and twist the waist, the left hand is over top of the right foot. If you right have toe. really strong legs, then when you go down you can line up your thigh with the foot, but you can try to have your thigh horizontal, or almost horizontal as you go down, like this. There. And if you get really good at this and you're very strong and flexible, then you can have your spine almost straight. Your knees will be fairly close together, but the one foot will be out in front. And then you can go down with the thigh horizontal. If you cannot get the thigh horizontal, that's okay. You can drop the hip back. You can bend forward at the waist if your waist is in good shape and you don't have high blood pressure and are not prone to dizziness, you can do that. Or this movement that we call needle to the bottom of the sea can be called stick the harpoon in the beach. So you don't have to go so low. The twisting and the alignment and the settling of the weight into the thighs and the opening of the back, this is all far more, impor far more important than going lower. 
going lower is wonderful if you can do so. But remember to know your limits, check with your doctor, make sure you're not hurting yourself when you do this. The purpose of martial arts is not to beat yourself up. Here, a needle so, to the bottom of the C to here. So there to there. This is a hand motion and a waist twisting. It's not a hip movement as uh, normally as such until the hands get to here. When the hands get to here, then you can pivot around the hips again. But as the hands are coming up to here, like that, they come up in front of you. The right hand is more or less in the middle of the chest, a little bit out in front, and the left hand is hugging a tree, a little one, like that. So the hands are in this position. And then the pelvis turns by dropping the hip back a little more, like that. Now, when the hands when you go do the down, fan move the right. as I step, the hand goes out. This hand rotates, palm out, like this. Think of the index finger as being the end of the, the axis around which the forearm rotates. And the hand turns like this. The right this. hand extends, the left arm rotates. So if you go back in this tree-hugging posture, or logger-hugging posture, depending on your politics, from here, extend with the index finger upwards and pushing at shoulder level. The fingertips are at eye level. The hand is about shoulder level. Shoulder sinking down, elbow dropping, extending the hand, just like any good Tai Chi push. So the elbows are not out like this. Instead, it's down. And when you push, it's this part of the hand that pushes. So this, if you take the thumb and the base of the thumb and the muscles of the thumb out of the picture, then this is the part that pushes. To support that, you can bring your thumb in and hold that position. But in the form, we keep this thumb nice and relaxed, so it's nice and loose. In application, you might tighten that up to help support the thumb and protect it from here during a push. One, two, three, four, five, six, just to confuse you. So twisting the waist. You do that in order to balance the leg. That's a good warm up. So needle to the bottom of the sea and fan through the back. Now we are talking about vertical movement, vertical power, driving power down, lifting power up, getting underneath and pivoting and supporting uh, a power. We'll demonstrate a little bit of this with the martial applications. Be careful. Uh, don't tire your knees out too quickly. Make sure you're working your thighs and your waist. Make sure the shoulders are relaxed and have fun doing it. Don't overtax yourself. Uh, it's hard enough doing this without talking. As you can tell, I'm a little out of breath because I've been doing this for an hour and I've been talking through the whole thing. Pace yourself, uh, know your limits, check with your doctor to make sure it's okay to do this stuff, especially the bending over and coming up again. If you can keep your body upright, that's better. That also means your thighs are very strong. If it's okay from a martial point of view and from an exercise point of view to lean forward and do this as long as your balance is good and your thigh strength is great and your blood pressure is okay. So you don't want to have, if you have really low blood pressure or really high blood pressure, you want to be careful that you're not getting dizzy or lightheaded as you do this. Right, so don't underestimate the, the physical challenge of doing Tai Chi. This can be very demanding. So uh, take your time, enjoy it, work up to it gradually. We have lots of professional athletes who uh, burn themselves out doing Tai Chi, thinking that, oh, it's a nice relaxing exercise. Well, it's very relaxing, yes, but it's relaxing because uh, it strengthens your thighs and relaxes your waist and makes you work harder. So pace yourselves. Very good. More practice. From diagonal flying, the right hip goes around, Down. right hip goes back, left hip goes back, hands come up, knee comes up, pivot, and then from by, here, by dropping my left hip back, I have this point, this becomes the still point, and I pin his hand against my leg. But I drop my left hip back, and that overpowers his forearm. I don't have the strength in my hands to do that myself, but if I can keep this still, and I move my left hip, then that overpowers him. It's not a matter of strength. It goes back to the cover, and yeah. now I can do this, and then drop the hands, and then sink the hips. 
hand and foot down and needle two, three, up, knee, there. Now he's going to try to recover. He'll hold on to your hand. So you let him hold on to your hand. You just move the hand. Oh. There. They give him a hand to hold on to. So here, you're going to fall. Hold on. Hold on. Drop your hips. The other is if he's punching, needle to the bottom of the knee, yep. or the right hip drops back, and the left hand is still. This is From here. Uh, in a high stance, this is just a little off balancing. It can also be a powerful strike if I drop my right hip. I could make a fist here or here and drop my right hip back like this, like that, and knock him off balance. From here, I drop my right hip back and he moves around my arm. It's not about the horizontal so much as it is about the vertical, and that's the next part. Knee, vertical, down. Right? As soon as he is resisting the horizontal, there, then I start going down, and I just drop like that. Then I drop my hips and turn. The right hand goes over his wrist, and I break that. Bring the hand up like this, and now I have that joint lock. I use my elbow a little there, so I pivot around my right hip, and then I just hold on to his little finger. From here, down, here, going around the left hip. So he grabs, right hip, down, step, right hip, oh, like that. Or again, he punches, look, over here, and then strike, and then fan through the back. He punches, look, look, there, trap, step, and now right hip goes around. If I try to just push him backwards, he'll resist. But if I go down into his feet still, then he doesn't quite know how to do that, deal with that because I'm spiraling. Then this hand rotates outwards. Here. And just, boom. Knee down. And then I just drop my hands and the hip. Like that. He grabs my wrist. From here, I can draw back, needle to the bottom of the C. From here, the left hip goes back. And remember, if you break your partner, you don't get another one. From here, you grab my wrist. If I'm pulling down and you're trying not to get pulled down, then I can go back up again. Then I have this joint lock. Then I pivot around the right and I lock your fingers. Then step. And then... And through the back. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. We're going to try to get as many of these videos in over the next few days as possible. Thank you. Bonjour, men. Take care.